Hey everyone, I am Brenda Finley from Finley Feather Farm here in Southern Illinois. Today we're going to talk about the incubator. We are hatching our own chicks here at Finley Feather Farm and we're going to show you a bit of how to do it with your own incubator if you're new at this or maybe you just need a refresher. If your incubator is not the same type as ours, you could still use what we teach you here today and apply it to your own at home. Now let's get to it. This is our circulated air digital incubator, model 2250 from Farm Innovators Inc. We are not associated with this company, but we have had this incubator for about two to three years now, and we've had around five hatches um, using this incubator. And so I'm going to go over kind of the details and the, the usage of it and my overall opinion. Starting out, I want to mention that we do not have both of these air holes here. This one is missing over here. So when it comes time to pull one, and uh, I'll go into detail more about that later, but when it comes time to pull one, we usually keep tape over this and we'll just pull this one out. Right here is your LCD panel. It gives you the temperature, the days you set that for pretty much whatever eggs you're hatching. You'll set that to where it will count them down for you and then it gives you kind of the information here on that. If you wanna to pause to check that out, you can. Right here is the humidity, and there is, right, there is a black cord that connects to this, and I'll show you guys that in a minute, but that will check the temperature for you. And these buttons here will help you reach to the amount of days that you are wanting, and it can add, uh, also help you set the temperature. So right out the bat, I want to say that this egg turner did not come with the initial purchase of the incubator. We had to buy this separate. Originally, if you were to do without the uh, egg turner, you would need to lay your eggs down on the bottom and you would mark one side with an, a symbol like an X and mark the other side with maybe like an O so you know when to rotate them and there'll be a certain amount of time like a certain amount of a time period where you would be rotating those eggs yourself both the egg turner it automatically does that for you this here is the black cord that i was talking about this is how it checks your temperature and then I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that there is a one number one filling hole here. So when you want water down at the bottom, that helps with your humidity. The filling holes is what you would be using and you would pretty much just put your like a turkey baster of water into that. If you're careful, you can always lift the top up and pour water into the bottom. And then over here, this is the second filling hole. So once you take the egg rotator out, this is at the bottom. And then this is how your bottom will look. It will obviously look more cleaner if it's brand new. Ours has been used a few times, like I said before. And when we do clean it, we just, Pretty much use a toothbrush with soap and water and get into the fine crevices, but you can see it doesn't always work out that way because when your eggs are sitting in that rotator, those chicks come out and the eggshells will fall through the bottom. The uh, more often than not, will fall onto this, and that helps a lot whenever it catches it here instead of at the bottom. But when it doesn't, sometimes the fluids will go to the bottom and pretty much it will sit there until all your eggs are hatched and you're done with it because you can't just take all those eggs out 
to clean the bottom as you go. So just keep that in mind if you use one that's styrofoam. When you are setting up your incubator, you will want it in a location that avoids air draft. And you want to make sure that it will stay about 70 degrees on the outside. When you first start, you're going to add about a quarter of a cup to half a cup. I just added half a cup because that's typically what it takes for where I'm at. And that's typically just how I what I would need. Your meter should be at a relative humidity of 50 to 60 percent during incubation and three days prior to the hatching you'll need to increase that humidity to 65 around 75 percent and that's whenever you're going to be adding water through these holes and make sure you don't go too high over humidity because you don't want to damage any of your electric equipment there. Make sure that your cords are also not touching the eggs during the process. Eggs have different time frames for when they need to be in the incubator. For duck eggs, it's I believe it's 28 days and chicken eggs, it's 21. And right now we have three duck eggs and the rest are chicken eggs. So I'm going to place those in the incubator. I'm going to add my egg rotator there and then I'm going to place these in. Make sure your eggs are pointy side down. I think the rest are. We have been collecting these eggs for a week now. Uh, today would be seven days. We had more than enough. This egg rotator will hold 42 eggs for us. That's a big on. Hopefully it's not a double yoker. You don't want your double yokers. You don't want to hatch those. That's pretty. Okay, I'm getting distracted. Um, so we've been collecting these for a week now. And they are good to sit on your counter for around six days. You don't want to go over six pretty much. Seventh day you should add them to the incubator. We have a pretty decent collection of different types of color eggs. These are all mixed breed. The majority of our flock now is mixed breed, which I prefer, hopefully this duck egg fits, I'd prefer, move that one down, if we had one type of breed, that way they're easier to sell, but at the same time, a lot of people just want chicks at a good price, that way they can have uh, laying hens in the future because that's mainly their concern. That's what they're going to be using it for is to get eggs in return. A lot of them will be good egg layers. On our last batch, we hatched 42 and sold about half of those. And then we kept the other half and about six of them ended up being roosters so <clears throat> we are hoping this batch won't be too bad we are gonna try to sell most of them but in case they don't sell for whatever reason uh, I would like to have mainly hens around 
but it won't be too much of a problem. Some of these have dates. I forgot to add dates to all of them as I went, but you can see that it was on the 7th. That was the 3rd or the 4th. This is the 6th, and this is a pretty egg, so I'm going to show you it. Isn't that pretty? These speckled eggs. I want some quail for their speckled eggs, but I guess these two here will will uh, hold me off for a little while. Also, sometimes you can add one here, but make sure it's small. If I have one smaller, I'm going to try to find that real quick because it's going to kind of collide. They, these, uh, the egg rotator, it rotates three times a day, but I just want to be on the safe side. It shouldn't hit it. Typically there's this little plate. I'm not exactly sure where I set it down, and that is always my problem. But that looks a little better. Probably the same. Hmm. Hopefully it'll be fine. But there's a little plate that goes over that in case you don't want to sit one there. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm I'm going to keep an eye on it and make sure it isn't going to be a problem. If it is, I'm just going to have to remove it and maybe shove it under a hen that is out in the coop. comes to your eggs, some of them will already be decently clean for the most part. Then you'll also get some of your dirtier eggs, like these duck eggs, they're pretty gross. But you don't want to really wash them. Just make sure you get off most of the stuff that you can, you can kind of brush it, see how that's not coming off. If it's not coming off, then it doesn't need to come off. There's it's not it's supposed to. You just leave it on there. You're just going to leave it alone. You don't need to wash it. If you wash it, you're going to destroy your bloom. And the egg may... The chick may just not hatch. You'll have some problems there. But it's best to just rub it off if you can. If you can't rub it off, then that will be pretty much it. You'll just have to put it in your incubator. I also want to add that some people do believe that depending on the egg shape, it will give you the idea of whether or not your egg is going to hatch into a hen or a rooster. Some say that the pointier eggs would be the roosters and then these round eggs over here would be your hens. And then others have said it vice versa. If I was to take a guess, and that is to be true, this would be the rooster and that would be the hen. I'm not sure why I would take that guess, but it's just kind of a gut feeling if that is to be true. I have not seen a study done on it, so maybe we can do one in the future. I also want to add that others believe that the temp can have an effect on your egg hatching, whether or not it's going to be a rooster or a hen. And the reason why the temp comes into play, or some people believe that comes into play, is because roosters can't handle lower temps, so they believe the eggs would not make it, and so your eggs would be wasted if they were roosters, and then only your hens would make it because it's at a lower temp. But I have also read that people believe it vice versa in that scenario as well. The hens can make it in lower temps and so they wouldn't make it. Now I got my top put on and the incubator itself and the egg turner are plugged into the wall. I'm going to have to change this temp here to make sure it's set to be around 99 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit with 21 days and I'm going to calculate after the 21 days my extra seven days for these duck eggs. This is pretty much just so it's a simple countdown. It doesn't really change anything with the incubator process itself. I also have this uh, 
covered with some scotch tape and another type of tape. So if you're missing one as well, scotch tape has worked for us pretty well in the past. It hasn't had, we haven't had any problems with just simple scotch tape, but we just added both. I need to change this by holding down mode three seconds. And this will flash. Now I'm just gonna leave it at 100. Which it, they, when you first buy, buy yours, they automatically come set to 100. I'm gonna change it to 21 days. mode and there we go. This needs to be set around 50 to 60 percent and that's your humidity right there and this is slowly climbing up. It's like I said before needs to be around 99 to 100 and that's pretty much it. You just kind of got to wait. If your humidity is too high what you can do is, I, what we've done in the past is pretty much just pull a plug or sit it kind of like on the side where not too much air is getting in, but it's just so slowly decreasing because once that fresh air hits the uh, incubator on the inside, the humidity will go down. And then once it's somewhat close to what we need it at, we're gonna go ahead and clog it up. We don't want it too low, but getting closer is the better, and then we can slowly decrease it as we go. It's not too much of a big deal. Now that was loads of fun. I don't know about you, but I am definitely excited for these chicks. Be sure to tune back into our YouTube channel to check on the process of how we take care of our incubated chicks, while they're still in the eggs and after. If you haven't yet, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the like button if you like our material. We're coming back with another YouTube video each Thursday at 4.30 in Illinois, Southern Illinois here.